watching online. We're going to have an awesome time in the presence of the Lord. Anybody in this place like to praise God? Well, our altars are open, so let's lift our hands first of all to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, this is a day that you have made, and we are glad in it, and we are going to offer up high praise to you because you are worthy of all of our praise. Give the Lord a shout in the house. Let's, let's fill the altars in praise today. Go ahead, Renee.
When he went to that cross, he said, live. He said, live. Thank you, God, we're alive in this place. And we can open up our mouths and give you praise right now to the throne of heaven. We can give you praise, oh God. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. No matter what's going on in the world, no matter how crazy it gets, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. He is the ancient of days, the ancient of days, and he lives in this place. If we see another, it's not you, Lord. We're looking for you. We're looking for you to crack the sky soon, 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 soon. So we draw. We stay with the cross. We stay with the cross. It was finished at the cross and we worship you, Lord. Lord. Thank you for the cross. We worship through the cross. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross right there until my trophies at last I lay I will cling always to the old rugged cross. Jesus and I will exchange it someday for a crown. Hallelujah is coming, so I'll cherish all. last I laid down all my life I will cling to the old rugged cross my Jesus my love and I will exchange it oh Someday for a crown. Give him praise. We will lay our crowns down at his feet. Hallelujah. Lift your hands in worship to the king of all kings. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. You're worthy. Worthy of it all. Hallelujah. We bow with the angels.
Because that's the name, that's that name. You created all this, Lord, and you've done it through Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that this is the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice, and we shall be glad in it. God, we honor you today of what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. Satan, we get great pleasure in telling you to get under our feet. Hallelujah, that what we bind on earth is bound in heaven, and we bind you today. We use the power of attorney of the name of Jesus to do that. We thank you that everything done today will be to the Father's glory, to the Son's glory, and to the Holy Spirit's glory. We decree it and declare it today in Jesus' mighty name. Give the Lord a great standing ovation today. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on. Come on, come on. God is so good. Woo! I tell you, the presence of the Lord is here. You that are watching all over the world, we thank you for being a part of Covenant Church this morning. Hallelujah. We just finished our wonderful visionary conference, and we're going to do a little extra add-on today. 
And God has been so good and gracious. And we thank you for watching wherever you are. Faith destroys all distance between me and you, between you and God. I don't care if you're in China, Hong Kong, or you can be in wherever you are. You can be in New York, bless God, or South Africa, whichever. And you know, you're here. And that's what's so wonderful about that. Isn't that wonderful, ladies and gentlemen? Well, turn around, shake somebody's hand, tell them you love them, and you may be seated for just a moment. Hallelujah, Lord. Woo. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, what a blessing. Hallelujah. What a blessing of the Lord it is. That this is the day the Lord has made we rejoice. It's wonderful to have a day that we give the Lord. I think we need to write letters to the NFL and say, give us God's day back. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, you know, you can still have football game, but do them Sunday night. Sunday late night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I think people ought to close the malls like they used to. You know what I mean? This is the day the Lord hath made. What a blessing of God it is. So we thank you for coming today, and, and I mean that sincerely. And I'm going to do some things that I normally don't do. I'm going to dedicate two babies today, and then I'm going to get into the Word in just a minute. And I'm really excited about this. We just finished dedicating a baby in the back in the, in the um, uh, uh, Brother Lash's baby in the back of the speaker's room. And today, we're going to do that, and hallelujah. And you know, I'm not a pastor. Kathy probably should be doing it. Come up here, Kathy, if you don't mind. Hallelujah. This is my wife, pastor of the church, Kathy. Kathy, do baptize. Hallelujah. The Lord is so good and gracious. Been married to that woman for 53 years. Isn't that something? 53 years. Glory to God. I know she looks a lot younger than me, but uh, she wears makeup, and I don't. So there it is. We're not going to go there today. <laughs> We're not going to go there today. I'm still, always, I'm still walking in grace and mercy and forgiveness. <laughs> yeah. How many people are here today that have stayed over from the Visionary Conference you're visiting today? Let me see a hand around Look the house. My Lord. Thank you so much for being here. Wasn't it an awesome conference? We had a good time. Wow. I mean, every, everyone I've talked to says this is the best so far. You know, I can't say the best ever because every year it builds and grows. Yes. But how many people have traveled here from outside of the... Uh, the state of Louisiana. Let's see that hand first. Look wow, at that. Oh look at that. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Amen. Anybody from out of the country? I know we had people here. Look at there. They're from Ireland, right? From Ireland? From Ireland. I know we had people from Hong Kong. Is, from... is that from the Republic of Ireland? No. Or from Bel Northern, or from Northern Ireland. Ireland. Northern. Okay, I got to make sure. You know, I, I understand. You don't mix them up. We love, sure. them all. we love them all, though. We love right? them all. Priests in, in the Republic of Ireland and also in Northern Ireland. I like that's Ireland. That's right. That's right. It's and such a blessing. Is the people here from Hong Kong? That, 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 met two they ladies. left. They left. The, that, the, listen to what these people did. They, uh, we got them to come to the uh, speaker room, and the Lord said, go meet that man. So they just got on an airplane, flew from Hong Kong just to meet us, and, and, uh, and, and was able to stay for the, a visionary conference. Isn't that a blessing of God? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's amazing that people would fly that far, you know? Right. And she said, you ever been to Hong Kong? I said, no, but it looks like I'm coming. I said, I got a jet. I can get there, glory to God. We got, we got to do something in Hong Kong. How many of you people watching in Hong Kong, y'all want me to come? Do a comment on the social yeah, media if you're that. watching. We'll do whatever we can. Oh, we'll go down there. I believe that the Holy Spirit is talking to you. I like you've been saying it more than once. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, it surprised me, you know. I mean, people would travel that far, and well, they're just, just such a we just come back from the other part of the world. We're in South Africa just right. a week or so ago. Right. And it was so powerful. And there's some people in India, I apologize. I've been saying I've been coming to India for years, and I hadn't had a chance. I am a very busy, busy man, but I got to get over there, you know. And, uh, and, I, and, and even I've had people invite me to China and all kinds of different things. I'm just doing, I'm going 90 to nothing. The Lord said, we'll do 100 to nothing. Praise God. I said, okay. And, and God is so good and gracious, and I mean that. We also have a very special person here today who I esteem highly in the faith, and that's Mrs. Susan Kitely from uh, Toronto, I guess you could say, Canada. Would you stand up, Susan? Give her a hand clap. Pastor of a great church. Thank you, my Lord. She gave me the one, one of the best compliments, Kathy, I think I've ever received in my life. And I called her one time. She was sitting over here and uh, doing one of the Believers, uh, believers Conventions. I got Believers Conventions. Visionary. Visionary Convention. And she said, you make Jesus irresistible. 
Was anybody there when she said that? Anybody remember that? And I thought, simply irresistible. <laughs> and I've never got away from it since. And yeah, thank I think you, she Susan. meant something other than I that. Know she uh, meant Kathy. <laughs> Susan, would you come and greet the congregation for me, please? Yes, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. She has spoken to our women one year, and it was such a blessing. Hallelujah, Lord. Say something else. Who's on? Well, it's such a delight to be here. Oftentimes, I can't be here on a Sunday morning, and what a treat it is to be with this congregation, and you have a phenomenal pastor. I've just come, and I've seen so many changes, and you know, when uh, people are pastored well, there is growth, there is depth, there is joy, there is commitment, there is faithfulness, and it speaks well of the church. And if you're speaking well of the church, you are reflecting the pastor. So I just want to honor Pastor Kathy. And of course, our great general, Dr. Jesse Duplantis. <laughs> You know, throughout the conference, and the Lord was just reminding me, I'm a big God. Amen. People have shrunk me down, but I'm a big God. And you're believing for what's doable. Amen. But I'm wanting a people that will believe me for the impossible. <laughs> and don't get comfortable with what you can see happen. Begin to believe what nobody can fathom that can happen. Hallelujah, Lord. So that the glory will be his and his alone. Because the world will say nobody could have done that. No way that could have happened. But God, God made a way. God did this. And I just think that God wants some of his glory seen afresh out of hearts that I ask him to do the impossible. Hallelujah. And we certainly have been mentored by individuals that ask him to do the impossible. So I don't know about you, but I'm going to be a good disciple this week, and I'm going to dream bigger dreams. Hallelujah. Come I'm going to I'm going to imagine bigger things, and I'm going to see what I've never seen before. Amen. That's a fact. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Appreciate it. Give her a good hand clap. Yes. I'll get your hand here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love Susan because, you know, when I met her, she had already been pastoring for 20 years. She's been a great role model for me. And I've seen her stand strong and be respected by her community and used by the Lord all over the world. So we honor you. And thank you for taking the time to be here and for being our dear friend. We love you. Isn't that a blessing It's a Lord. blessing to be yeah. here in the house of the Lord and see all that God's doing. You know, the, we met so many beautiful people throughout the whole conference. It'd be impossible to recognize all of them. But we're all going to be gathered together in heaven one day and get a chance to really connect and do all those wonderful things. Amen. I think I'm going to be one of the guest speakers at the Visionary Conference in heaven. I know Jesus, Jesus is going to be the host. Because listen, you ain't seen vision until you get to heaven. And I've been to heaven. I went there in 1988. And all we know of is this one little universe. And there's multiple universes. And God's going to show us stuff that we're going to be doing that you never thought in your, in your finite mind what's going to happen out there. Right. You, you know, I guess this is kind of like the rehearsal dinner before you get married. Everybody has to get in place and do so, know what they have to do. We Amen. need to get busy, right, and be ready for the great things God has for eternity for all of us. It's a blessing of the Lord. Well, I'm really excited about this. Um, you know, I felt uh, when I met Kenneth and Gloria Copeland all these years and years ago, never thinking in my entire life that I'd ever uh, would actually preach with them. I, I first met Gloria there she had come to Pastor Frank and Paris Bailey's Church at Victory, and she had heard of me, and she said, let's go to lunch, Jesse. So I went to lunch with her and, uh, uh, and uh, Frank and Paris, and we had a really nice time. She said, Kenneth is really, he likes your ministry, and I had never met Kenneth Cole, never thinking in my wildest dreams that I would ever meet them uh, or meet him or anything of that nature. And, uh, so, and, uh, and so we had a nice lunch, and that was, was about it, you know, that kind of stuff. I began to run into Jerry Savelle on different churches. We'd preach in the same church. Make a long story short, at a motorcycle rally, I was asked to preach by a guy who's in heaven now, Jimmy Hester, uh, if I would come do uh, the full gospel motorcycle rally. He said, and, I, and I'm using Brother Kenneth Copeland's air, uh, they call it Copeland Field which is the airport that they have there. And I said, I said, well, sure. He said, and I want you to preach Friday night. And I want, uh, he said, and uh, Brother Copeland's going to preach Saturday night. And Jerry Sabella's going to preach Sunday morning. Could you do that? 
I said, well, if it's all right with them, fine. So when I walked in, they had a little trailer. I, I got there actually late Friday because I was coming in from Miami. And uh, anyway, to make a long story, so I walked in, and, and Kenneth Copeland and Jerry was in there. He goes, hello, I'm Kenneth Copeland. I said, pleased to meet you. I'm just, I know you. I said, I know you too. And we just talked for maybe three minutes at the motion because we got to, I'm about ready to go out there and preach. And he just stopped and said, you know, Jesse, me and Jerry do this all the time. He said, I want all three of us to preach tonight. I said, okay. He said, let's all tag team preach. I said, okay. And he said, he said why don't I start first? Je Jerry, you get in the middle, and Jesse, you close the gate. I said, okay. So all three of us preached that Friday night. All of us, three of us preached that Saturday night, and all of us preached that Sunday morning. And what I didn't know, God was forming a team. This is before Creflo or Bill Winston. This is way back when, when it was just Kenneth and Gloria and Jerry. And there was a beautiful girl sitting on the front row. I said, that girl looked just like you, Kenneth. He said, she should. She's my daughter. <laughs> and that was Kelly Copeland, you know what I'm saying? I said, oh, my, man. I said, you got strong genes. <laughs> Praise God, you know, because she does look a lot like her mother and father. And, that, and so that day or that Sunday, uh, we were holding hands, and, we, and uh, uh, Jimmy was going to dismiss, and kind of squeezed my hand. And he leaned over to me, and he said, listen, I'd love you to preach one of my conventions. And I told him, I said, I can't. I said, I'm already booked. I said, uh, it just, I, he said, well, how about the next year if you can't? I said, we'll see what's what, you know. I, I wanted to, but I, m my word is my bond. If I tell you something, I'm going to do what I say. And I mean that sincerely. And uh, anyway, it worked out to where I could give him three days. And buddy, that started something. And I thought I'd preach one, maybe at the most two, if that my, You know, because he has so many people want to preach, especially those believers conventions. This is many, many, 34 years ago. And, uh, and I've been a part of that team since then. He said, you're part of our family. And I do feel uh, a part of that family, and uh, especially the Word of Faith family. And today, uh, we're going to uh, dedicate, and he, Brother Copeland and Sister Glory, they got a lot of grandkids. And Rachel is the, is the oldest grandchild, am I correct? Uh, oh, no, not the oldest girl grandchild, right? Yeah, and when I saw her, and she looks like Kenneth, too, you know what I'm saying? You could just, that Copeland jeans is running all over the place, glory to God. And I just really liked Rachel from the minute I saw her, you know, because she was just a little girl, like 10, 11 years old, something like that. And uh, she wanted a job at the ministry to told her she could sweep out the hangar. It was so funny. She swept a little bit. She said, is there anybody, don't we have somebody in the ministry that can do this? And, of course, she grew up, became a very beautiful lady, and got married to a wonderful man. And she went from a, from a Copeland to a Meyer, I believe it is. And we have the honor of um, dedicating little Claire to the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'd like uh, the Meyer family to come on up. And, and, and Kelly, you come on up too as the grandmother. This is Kelly's uh, grandchild. And all the kids, if they'd like to come up, y'all come on up. Give them a hand clap as they come. What a blessing of the Lord. And whoever else you want to come, I leave that to y'all, Kelly. Just whoever else wants to come up here, come on up here. Hallelujah. Isn't that a beautiful family? Give them a hand. Isn't that nice? Look at that dress. I tell you what, man, look how pretty she is. That's a blessing. This is Rachel, and this is Claire. We're going to uh, 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 dedicate. Look at Claire looking at me. She said, look at her smile at me. <laughs> see, babies love me because they see the white hair. They think I'm God. I'd rather believe that anyway. You know what I'm saying? I'd just rather believe that. And, uh, uh, and so I'm, if, if I can take her, if that's okay, I'm going to start with Claire. Praise the Lord. I'm, okay, Kathy, I know how to hold a baby. That's Claire. Wait, let me do it this way. She likes to Look at this baby. Ain't this something? This makes me feel so young. <laughs> if you could just touch her arm, this, this new skin is good stuff, <laughs> you know. And Claire is such a blessing of the Lord that God has sent. And how old is she, Rachel? Four? Four months? Almost four months. Almost four months. She's a pretty good-sized girl, huh? Isn't that a blessing of the Lord? So would you stretch forth your hand? Father, I thank you. I release my anointing on Claire. Did you see her jump? I released that right there. And God, that everywhere Claire's go, as a child, as an adult, the protective hand of God will always be upon her. Lord, I, I ask you to take a portion of my joy and put it upon Claire, be known as the, the happy child, the smiling child, the happy adult, 
the smile in that dog. That everything she touched prospers. Now she's got a great track record. She's got some wonderful people, the Lord, that, that, that she's related to. But Father, I thank you that you allowed us, us, all these people in this church, to see the creation that you gave to these wonderful people. Father, I dedicate her to the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus, for whose I am and who I serve. The anointing of increase will be upon her, the anointing of joy, and that everything she touched will prosper. But the smile, God, let her as a young girl, when she becomes a teenager, just smile and melt people's hearts with the holiness of who you are. Lord, I decree and declare it today, and I thank you. Call those things would be not as though they were that they will be, Lord. We thank you for Claire. We thank you for this wonderful family. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a hand clap right here. And Rachel, would you like to say something? You want to hold a baby? Yeah, I'll hold a baby. Go ahead and uh, give, give Rachel the mic. I just wanted to, I asked Brother Jesse if he'd do this because I just wanted to glorify God because it was at the visionary last year that I received some healing and um, the next month, well, Brother Jesse prayed over us and some other couples, one in babies, and um, the next month we conceived her, and here she is. <laughs> so. And that's something. Yeah. And, and here's the man that created all this right here, you know. Would you like to say something, brother? Go oh, ahead. Sure. Well, I'm just so grateful to, to be here. Uh, you guys have an amazing church. Thank Kathy, you, You've done a great job. Uh, this precious family that we have is absolutely a gift from God. Amen. Uh, and it's it for a time. I strongly feel that this is the generation. Amen. There's going to be one. Yes. There's going to be a people, a body, Amen. that sees the return of our Lord. I believe it's us. I really do. And I strongly feel that this generation here, little packs down there, they're going to be the ones that usher in Amen. the greatness, the power, the majesty of the kingdom. Hallelujah, Lord. I'm going to be there, be a part of it. Amen. My hope is to train these children in kingdom ways. Amen. Kingdom principles. Amen. I'll say it. There's one thing that's more powerful than the Word of God. What? <laughs> There's nothing more powerful than the Word of God. Religious traditions and men. Truth. truth. That's right. Make the Word of God no avail, no power. Yeah. It's time to stop playing church. Amen. And it's time to start being a body. Amen. Regardless of denomination, creed, color, state, country, Democrat, Republican. We're all part of the kingdom. Yeah. Seek ye first the kingdom, the Lord said. Yeah. That's what we're doing. We have to train our children that way. Amen. Not to play church, not to be religious, but to be righteous and powerful. Amen. Signs, wonders, and miracles are to draw attention to the king, not our churches, not our people. I don't know how to walk that way. But God has called us to train our children in something we don't know. Yeah. And we're going to do it by God's grace and his anointing. Amen. And the Holy Spirit leading the body. You get your baby excited here. Amen. <laughs> but I'm just so honored to be here. I love this church. You guys got a great, great family here. Thank you. Yes. And I love you guys. Appreciate Thank you. you. Kathy, you want to hold a little Claire for a minute? Oh, oh, and I'm, oh, would, okay. you, you, would you like to hold? And then I want Kelly to say something okay. to grandmother. I don't get any ideas, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't let this white hair fool you. <laughs> Just thought I could tell you that. Thing. Aww, thank Kelly, you, guys. This is Kelly Copeland. Give her a hand clap. This is Brother Copeland's daughter. <laughs> She's such a blessing of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to say something. That's sweet. Thank you, Brother Jesse. Yeah, and thank you for everything. Thank you for how you've ministered to them. It's been a, it's been a, we were, in, we've been such shifted into such a new time. And sometimes that comes with like things happening that hit you in the face and surprise you. But God's not surprised. 
and he's taking us through. And I've, so I've seen the last several, I've been saying it for like six or seven years, we were moving into a shift and the mm-hmm. shaking. But the other day, somebody had a word for me about changing gears. And I thought, I like that kind of shifting. <laughs> yes, we're shifting on purpose into, into a high, more powerful gear. And I think that's what has hit me about what Caleb was saying. And this morning, what I was hit me about dedicating her was that I said, I am dedicating myself to building and helping to build a tabernacle for the Lord Jesus. So we can dedicate ourselves to helping build this tabernacle in ourselves and in in this generation. So that's, I'm I'm dedicated to that. And you know, you made me feel so good. She said, she said this in the, she said, you know, but Jesse, I said, you know, I said, I've been knowing your mom and dad, I kind of feel like a copeman. She said, well, I kind of feel like a Duplantis. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, you make such people a... feel that way. How many of y'all feel like a Duplantis? <laughs> See, you thank make you. people feel well, that thank way. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And I appreciate you allowing me to do this. This baby was listening and smiling. She's laughing. Yes, she she's laughing. Joy. It's she got the joy. She got the joy. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. I, I, I tell you what, man. When that day comes and she meet her Prince Charming, he better be, pr- he better be charming. He better be. <laughs> He's going he to have a track record. He's going to know it's going to, he, well, he won't be able to handle it. And this is a wonderful family. And I, I, I have to say this. They also have some family in heaven and uh, a, a wonderful little brother. And I think a, a, a little, another little twin sister. Twin sister. And, uh, you know, I have one daughter and, uh, and one granddaughter. But uh, Jody I had a miscarriage. As far as I'm concerned, I, uh, I have a little grandson. That's up in heaven. And uh, we took a picture. Of, I wanted to tell you that we took a picture of Meredith and when she was real small. And the way the guy shot it, it uh, he shot it uh, with, you could barely see her legs. And Meredith didn't she have looked, no hair. She had a little jumper on it. L- yeah. It looked like it was shorts. Yeah, it looked like a little shorts. And, and, and uh, she looked like a little boy. He said, oh, that's that your grandson? And when someone said that, it hit me. And I said, I bet you that grandson of mine looks just like that. And when Meredith, when she was a little bit of, I'm talking maybe two or three years old. We showed the, the thing. She said, this is when I was a boy. Because <laughs> she looks like a little boy. <laughs> yeah, when I, it was just, of course, now she's 15 years old, older than a little 15. And I want to thank you all for honoring me and to all of you. We love, yeah, it's a, such a blessing. And Rachel, you know, you all, I always, oh, I watched you all. I watched over you. I just watch you. I look for you every time at, at the Believers Conventions and things of that nature because um, you're very unique to me and very special. You and Courtney, them two girls. I say y'all, y'all were really, um, I don't know, just wonderful to me. Courtney is uh, uh, John Copeland's daughter. And, uh, and Courtney would c- walk up to the TV and kiss the television. And she'd say, Buddha Jesse. <laughs> One time I was holding her, I'll never forget this. You know, you got a DC-9, DC-3. And they, they sit like this in an airplane. And she must have been not much, maybe two years old. And she goes, well, Jesse, the plane sat down. <laughs> and I look, I said, that's right, the plane is sitting down. You know, how children see things. Thank you for allowing me this. Would you give them another hand clap? God bless you, sweetheart. Oh, you, 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 oh, oh, yeah, I'm going to take that. And did you give her the certificate? You get the honors? I get the baby. You get the baby. Hallelujah. Come on, give them a standing ovation. That's, uh, oh, that's here. Yeah, that's for you. Praise the Lord. Give them a standing ovation. Somebody come help them. Get down the steps. Hallelujah. What a blessing. I, I, I love babies. I, look at that, man. She's good, isn't she? <laughs> I love, you may be seated. I love children. Me and Catherine, they said, how come you only had one daughter? Didn't have enough time. Just traveling constantly all the time, but I've always loved kids. Kathy, when I married, she wanted six children. I wouldn't even say, but I cast that demon out of her. <laughs> I said, you done lost your you ever loving mind. You missed God there, though. That's true. <laughs> Okay, yeah, next now I would like, um, uh, uh, I'm going to call him Reverend Paxton John <laughs> Wilcox and his wonderful family, and John and, and Judy, if y'all like to come on up, or whoever wants to come on up, I'll leave that up to uh, John, the, uh, John the third or second, whatever, I'll get them all mixed up. Y'all come on up. This is a very unique family to me, too, and the, the grandfather of this child is one of my spiritual sons, and calls me dad. Y'all come up a little closer, praise the Lord. This is Jessica and, and John, and I, you honor me by just dedicating him to the Lord, and uh, y'all, y'all are so special to us, and, and i never forget that. Um, she told me she was pregnant for Paxson before Judy knew about it, or uh, before John. She said, people tell me secrets. 
<laughs> and it was a blessing. And Judy was standing there. She said, you know, and we were preaching for John at this church. And she said, I'm pregnant. And Judy went, what? <laughs> you know? It was just such a blessing. And uh, it's such an honor and a blessing. You want to say something, Kathy, before I? That's the first time she ever not said nothing. That's a blessing to God. So if I can, if I can just hold the, the, the little man, I'm going to put him right here up on my chest here. Now, this is Paxton John Wilcock. What do you think of this, baby? Huh? Got beautiful blue eyes. He's a blessing of the Lord. And I want to pray over him and dedicate him to God. Father, I, it just touches me. These are the greatest miracles you ever give anyone as children. Father, I ask you to call this boy into the ministry. Let him be a preacher of preachers. He may be an apostle or a prophet or evangelist, pastor, teacher. He can be a businessman too. He can be anything he wants to be. But Lord, you sent him and you made this family happy. Lord, I release my anointing into his body right now that everywhere he goes, he'll have the protection of God around him at all times, that everything he touches will prosper, Lord. And Lord Jesus, as he goes in life, everywhere he goes, you will, you will always go with him, Lord. Oh, yeah, and he hungry, Jesus. Maybe this is his first message. I don't know. Praise the Lord. But I thank you for him. I believe you for him, and I dedicate him to you. And with that everything, Lord. And he's looking for you right now, Jesus. I know he is. And I thank you, Lord. Let me get away. You can see his mama just in case. So, so I can finish this. We thank you for it. We believe you for him. And thank you for making him pretty. He's going to be a pretty girl, pretty boy. It's such a blessing of the Lord. And I thank you for him, God, that everything he touched prospers. And every way he goes, the joy of the Lord will be in him and will come out of him. And he'll be a smiling baby too. Father, I thank you for it. Notice how he looks at his mom and he just says, that's my mama. Praise God. We think he ain't looking at John. He's just looking at his mama. Praise God. That's the way it is, John. Is <laughs> she, he's going to be, a, you know, mama's boy. And there ain't a thing wrong with that. Look at him. Just smile. Either he's smiling or something else is happening. I don't know. But I just thank you. <laughs> it's amazing. Bless this little man. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a wonderful hand clap. Jessica, if you can. Now, John, would you like to say something? You're the dad of this child, if you'd like to. Sure. Yes, sir. We're, we're just so thankful that, you know, at first, you know, me and Jess were having, we were praying for Paxton, and we were praying that we wanted to have him. But, you know, we're thankful that the timing, everything, like you said, when we were back there, Jess is like, you know, she was praying for, for him. And then she said, I'm going to go tell Jesse because you just prayed over her. And we were just so excited and we're so thankful for, for to have you in our life and to be, you know, with you. So. Well, I think what's going to happen, I think what's going to happen in life, as he grows older, he'll probably say, let's go to New Orleans and go see Uncle Jesse. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, kids from all over the world call me Uncle Jesse. And I could be their great grandfather, you know. But I'm glad they called me uncle because they make me young. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, we, uh, would you like to say something, Jessica? Just to mimic what John said, I'm really grateful for both of you. Thank you. And as you said, you were the second that knew that I was pregnant with him. And it was just really special that I got to share that. Um, Praise the Lord. And it's even more special that you get to dedicate him. <laughs> yes, indeed. He gets hungry real quick. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. John, would you like to say something? Judy, Judy, whoever's first, fine. Go ahead. I guess I'll go first. Yes. We're just so thankful to be here today and excited about going to another level at this conference. And, um, you know, my son and grandson, it's exciting because, um, you know, dad said this week that he has partners that are son or grandpa, dad, not, I'm not like, I'm the grandpa though. <laughs> I'm a little young for grandpa, but grandpa dad and then grandson can be partners. So me and John were already partners with the ministry and with, with, with dad and mom. And so we're thankful now Paxton gets to enter into this. And, um, you know, it's just amazing for the anointing and the association and um, just the inspiration that they are able to put inside of us. Amen. And, um, you know, when John, when John wanted, John and Jessica wanted mom and dad to dedicate Paxton, 
I was on the phone and I was almost going to ask, but I'm like, I'm not allowed to ask. It's not my job to ask. It's their job to ask. And so we're just thankful that the Lord worked it out while we're here. And um, we have our, our granddaughter also. She's four. She's in the children's church. But she doesn't really want to come out here. She only wants to go to the children's church. She's so excited about coming to church. When we got here, we got to the hotel and she said, I said, we're here, we're at New Orleans. She says, no, we're not here. I says, Where do you, what do you mean? She says, I want to go to the church. <laughs> she can stay here and live here and sleep here. But that's how good God is. So thank we you. thank you for thank doing you. this for us today. Hallelujah. Thank you. Judy, why don't you say Come something? You like to go ahead. Go ahead, grandmother. We're just, we're just really thankful for both Jesse and Kathy and the whole family um, to encourage us when we need it, to grow us up, to stretch us. And we're just thankful that they're part of us and we're a part of Amen. the whole church. Amen. And we just are very grateful for you. Thank you. Oh. Alicia, I'd like you to say something. Alicia don't hardly ever talk at all, but she's single. She's the preacher. Just thought I'd help get somebody out here. Just say um, something. Well, I'm, um, I'm just, I'm very grateful also for both of you in my, in my life, in my daughter's life. And um, because of you um, and your minister, ministry, um, I just have this boldness on me and I am just I am very happy Amen. and um, I'm just very thankful for everything you guys have done Thank for us. And Alicia's a partner also. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a good hand clap. Kathy, you got the uh, yeah. certificate. This is Paxton. Paxton John. Come on, give him a standing ovation. Stand up and give him a standing ovation. This wonderful family. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all can just walk off this way, Kevin. You can go with him. What's that? Say that again. Okay. All right. Praise the Lord. Hadn't this been an awesome service today? Praise the Lord. I didn't recognize how many people are visiting this morning in the church. Again, I know I also asked about visionary, but many other visionaries. Thank you for being here today. So much is going on here at Covenant Church. I appreciate also, I want to say thank you to the whole team, the staff and the volunteers, everybody that helped during the conference. You, We applaud you. Everybody was saying how loved they felt. Thank you so much. Come on, give them a great hand clap, everybody that worked, everybody that served. Many of them are behind the scenes. We had the whole ministry involved in it, and this is a highlight of our year. And so we can't, couldn't do it without our staff as well as all of our volunteers at this wonderful Covenant Church. And we have lots of things going on, so we'd like you to see this spot, a uh, uh, visionary, uh, our announcements exactly, and then a vision spot, then Jesse will be back to preach. God bless. Thank you so much for deciding to worship with us here at Covenant Church. Countless lives are being transformed by the power of our Heavenly Father. Here are some ways that you can grow in faith with us and experience all that God has prepared for your life. If you're visiting today and haven't filled out a Covenant Church Connect card that is found in the back of your pew, please do so now and place it in the offering when it's received or bring it to the Welcome Center after service. We want to stay connected with you. Visit the JDM Product and Vision Center located in the main foyer of Covenant Church. Come and learn about our vision, browse our many products, and ignite your faith. Get connected with the Covenant Church home group. Groups gather next Sunday from 6 to 7.30 p.m. These classes take place the fourth Sunday of every month for fellowship, Bible study, and prayer. Visit the Welcome Center for more information. Be a part of our next Soul Winning Outreach on Saturday, July 29th. Teams will meet at 10 a.m. in the Annex before heading out into our community. Join us on August 6th during service for a special back-to-school blessing. Let's join together in agreement for our students and teachers as they begin a blessed and prosperous new year of learning. If your children are three months to seventh grade, we encourage them to join Pastor Melissa and the Kids Town Leaders at 10 a.m. on Sundays in the East Wing. Also, child care for three months to kindergarten will be provided at 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights in the East Wing. See you in Kidstown. Join us for our Wednesday night services as Pastor Kathy continues her series on the parables of Jesus. Services begin at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary. If you're in middle or high school, make plans to join Pastor Saudi and the United Youth Leaders on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Service takes place in the Annex. Let's unite in prayer in the prayer room on Wednesday before service at 6.30 p.m. and on Sunday mornings before service at 9 to 9.45 a.m. 
Keep up to date with Covenant Church by following us on our official social media platforms. There you will find daily messages meant to build up your faith. Also visit our website at jdm.org to learn more about how to get involved with the ministry. God bless you. Jesus said he could change a nation in a day. We can preach to the world today. 7.8 billion people in seven minutes. A time has come. We have a job to do, a vision to fulfill. We're believing God for the unbelievable, the impossible, simply because it's doable. He said, now, the uttermost parts of the world are yours. Go. Every little thing that I can give him opportunity to expand, I will. He's looking for people that are bold enough to step up and say, yes, Lord, here I am. Use me. Come on. Hallelujah. The only Jesus some people may ever see is the Jesus in you or the Jesus in me. Now, let's show the world who he really is. the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap for that. We really believe that slogan, reaching people, changing lives one soul at a time. I don't care how big this ministry gets, and I don't mean that to sound arrogant, it's, it's, it's pretty big. And you know, It's global ministry, but we deal with one person at a time. And it's amazing how we do that. And I tell my staff, when people call in, if they're talking to you, they're talking to me. In other words, so you act like me, talk like me, smell like me, and be like me. Because I act like God, talk like God, smell like God, and be like God. Which makes people mad, but God said I'm made in his image and in his likeness. So that's not cockiness or arrogance. That's just simply the truth. God's word is so good and gracious. So we thank you for joining us today. How many people brought your Bibles or your iPads or your telephones, whatever you use for scripture? And if you do, would you go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 27? And I want to start reading when I believe with verse 45, Matt. Matthew chapter 27, uh, verse 45, and um, I'll be reading out the old King James Version. In just a minute, I'll give you the um, title of this message, and I want, and I, but I believe you're going to enjoy it this morning. Verse 45 of Matthew chapter 27, now, was, now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama, sabach, Thaniah, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? What that meant was my sin was then upon Jesus, your sin was upon Jesus, and the Father God cannot look upon sin. Cannot. The Holy Spirit, they can't, they can't touch sin. None of them. The only person that ever touched sin in the Godhead was Jesus. He actually became sin. He did not become a sinner because you'd have to commit sin to be a sinner. He became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. We were never righteous, but we were made righteous, you see, because of what Jesus did. Let's read the next verse, verse 47. Some of, some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man call, calleth for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar, which means was very bitter, and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let, let, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had a when he cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. You got to understand something about crucifixion. You die from, it's a terrible, torturous affair. But when you die, you die of asphyxiation because your body can no longer hold itself up. And what happens is you begin to squeeze into your lung and you can't, you can't talk loud. But Jesus was still full of power, human strength as he died. And he hollered so loud that the next verse came to pass. And when he hollered, Look what he says in verse 50, excuse me, verse 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Notice that Jesus had great power, still strong strength. He was a very strong man. But with that voice, that, that veil was tore. And the title of this message is, And the Curtain Tore. And the Curtain Tore. And let me tell you something. That thing was 60 foot high. 
60, and it was tore from the top to the bottom. There's many different people saying it was this and that. Some say it was four inches. Some say it was three feet. But when Jesus hollered as loud as he could, God got so excited, he just ripped that curtain down from the top to the bottom. Because behind that curtain was the holies of holies where God resided. This awesome God. No one could walk in there. No one. It was completely closed off by that veil. And only once a year, a high priest, someone, he better be dedicated. He better be committed because he would die if he didn't. And he had to be sprinkled with blood that could go in there. And that man's sin would not be uh, washed away, but would be covered and pushed to the next year till Jesus died and resurrected. This is what happened, ladies and gentlemen. And the curtain tore. Something happened. God destroyed everything between man and God that day when he ripped that veil. I want to tell you something. Judas could have went into that holies of holies right then if he had repented. Peter could have went even though he had, he had denied Jesus. Could anybody, no longer was God a, a terrible God that could not be approached because the curtain tore. So I want you to listen to this and write these points down as I talk to you. The torn curtain was a symbol full of eternal meanings. The torn curtain was a symbol full of eternal meanings. Jesus had come. Jesus had lived and Jesus had died and Jesus had risen. Let me say it again. The torn curtain was a symbol full of eternal meanings. Jesus had come, my Lord. Jesus had lived. Jesus had died. And Jesus had risen. For something wonderful happened that day. Do you understand? When God did that, he opened up the whole world to come boldly to the throne of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's called the throne of grace. That's why me and you can sit down in God's presence because Jesus came, Jesus lived, Jesus died, and Jesus resurrected. The separation between man and God was gone forever and ever. Somebody shout somebody. Do you see that? Do you understand? Let me say it again. The torn curtain was a symbol full of eternal meanings. Jesus had come. Jesus had lived. Jesus has died and Jesus had risen. You got to understand what was going on. Write this down. When the perfect thing comes, the imperfect thing must go. You see, when the perfect thing comes, the imperfect thing must go. The Jewish dispensation was abolished as we know it. That doesn't mean that the Jewish dispensation was bad by any man. Let me tell you something about, about Peter, James, and John. They will still all their lives devout Jews. You see, a lot of people want to push the Jews. No, no, because the Jewish uh, religion or the Jewish dispensation is the foundation of Christianity. You can't have Christianity without the Jewish dispensation. So they were still devout Jews. You understand what I'm saying? But yet they had learned now that they didn't have to have a mediator. They didn't have to have a high priest. For all of a sudden, anybody that wanted to come to the throne of God came. You know what happened? It was clothed in darkness. It was thick because he was between them cherubs, the mercy seat. And all of a sudden, brother, when he tore that curtain, light came out. And Jesus is the light of the world. And for the first time, this God that was terrible to the Jews, could, could, you couldn't approach him, was now very approachable. So why wouldn't anybody want to come to the throne of grace and ask God to forgive them or ask God for spiritual, physical, financial, or anything you desire? Because it was completely open. Now, earthquakes took, earthquakes took busting up rocks, but the minute that veil, the minute that curtain was torn, they forgot about the earthquake. They forgot about the rocks renting. They forgot about all that because they knew something had happened there when that veil was torn. Let me say it again. When the perfect thing comes, the imperfect thing must go. The Jewish dispensation was abolished. What God did was he fulfilled the law. Do you understand? Jesus, but he didn't throw it away. For the first time, you could see the Ark of the Covenant. You could eat the bread of manna. You could touch Aaron's rod that budded. There was the Ten Commandments. And when we get to heaven, guess what's in that Ark of the Covenant? The manna the rod, and the Ten Commandments. So God hadn't done away with the law. You know, by no means, he's just fulfilled it, and it becomes a part of what we do today. And the curtain tore. And if that curtain wouldn't have tore, me and you would not have had a chance to come to the throne of God. All of a sudden, all, all everything that would stop you from coming to God was abolished completely. 
That's why you can come to that throne of grace. Do you see that? So let me say that again. The torn curtain was a symbol full of eternal meanings. Jesus had come. Jesus had lived. Jesus had died. And Jesus has risen. Then I tell you, when the perfect thing comes, the imperfect thing must go. The Jewish dispensation was abolished. What I mean by abolished, you could come now. You didn't have to have a high priest. Now, you know what's so sad about that? Even today in our Protestant ranks, as well as our Roman Catholic ranks, we still have to have somebody in between us. No, you don't. Jesus is the mediator. Jesus is the intercessor. Jesus is the high priest. And Jesus is the advocate. You understand what I'm saying? See, but you know, but religion always trying to put something between you and God, just like the Jewish dispensation and, and everything else. But no, no, you can come boldly to the throne of grace. That's why people get mad at me. Who do you think you are? A child of the living God, born and I can come boldly to the throne of grace at any given time because the curtain was torn. And when he tore it, all religion ceased right there. All kinds of crazy things that everybody had to go through to get there, that was all abolished. But Jesus is still a Jew. Jesus, and so don't you, why would anybody hate the Jew in any way, shape, or mind? Why would you hate anybody when you have total access to God if you so desire? Write this down. The past was done, not because the old was bad. The Jewish imposition wasn't bad. The past was done, not because the old was bad, but the new was better. Do you see that? The new covenant was better. Not that the old covenant was bad. No, it's still a foundational truth. But the new covenant was better. The past was done. The past never sees the future. Not because the old was bad, but the new was better. So uh, people think, you, you can actually come to the throne of God. I never forget, I talked to a Muslim in, uh, in England. He came to one of my meetings. He said, you, you mean you can go to God? I said, can I go to God? You want to come with me? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I said, but I, said I want to tell you something. You see, there's always somebody putting something between you and God. You know, I wanted to talk to God. The priest wouldn't let me talk to God. You've got to talk to me. But I remember when I got born again, I, and, and, and I'll never forget, I said, Jesus. He said, what? For the first time, all that religiosity, all that religious junk was gone, and I could come because he cleaned me up through his blood, the washing of the water of the word, see? That's why I'm confident in what he says, because no one could get me to the throne other than Jesus Christ. No one could get to God the Father other than Jesus tearing down that veil when he hollered more, bam, and God ripped that thing down. He said, I will let anyone come and stand by my Ark of the Covenant. Come to me at any given time. Think about that because the curtain tore and it was from the top to the bottom. So there was no way a man could tear that, see? Plus the, the amount of way to tear that thick cloth. It, it, it's impossible, but God did. What I love about it, they forgot about the earthquake. Boy, it went all over Jerusalem. The veil ripped. See what I'm saying? What Something happened that day. And that was total access and free access to God. The past was done, not because the old was bad, but the new was better. Yeah. Write this down. Jesus was the crown of all prophecy. Jesus was the crown of all prophecy and the consummation of all history. Think about that. He was the crown of prophecy and the consummation of all history. You know what that meant? I mean, it was finished. When he said it is finished, it was finished. Not only, listen to this, did people hear him holler when that, and uh, I mean, God tore that veil, but people in paradise heard it. And he, when he came out the grave, he come across that gulf that could, could not be walked over, but he knew how to walk on water. <laughs> and he set the captive free. Yes. Something had happened in Something wonderful had happened. You see what I'm saying? And yet, so people say, but, but Jesse, you're so free. Whom the Son is set free yeah. is free indeed. You seem like you got a light. Yeah, you know where he lives now? In my holies of holies. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Good God, man. I mean, I'm never alone. My peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give. He said, and enter into the rest. He said, My, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The church don't preach that. They preach religiosity. Uh, uh, Satan, uh, uh, God's going to beat you, bust you, and stomp you, and, and, but if you endure to the end, you shall be saved. Now, that is that old way of thinking. 
See, they want to separate you back from God Almighty. You see, when he said, no, no, you come to me any given time you want. I told Jody, my daughter, because she's my daughter, I said, you come boldly to, my, to me any time you want. You don't need to have an appointment to see your daddy. You can come, in, you come to the door of my private interest into my office. I say the same thing to all my spiritual sons and daughters. They don't need an appointment to see me. Why? Because I consider them the same thing as my biological daughter, my biological granddaughter. Just come. Why? Because you have free access to it. You know why? The curtain tore, ladies and gentlemen. The curtain tore. And it tore away all religiosity and all man's craziness. And there was the throne of God lit up. Ark of the Covenant lit up. The light of the world was shining out of there. And God was well pleased with Jesus. Isn't that something? So Jesus was the crown of all prophecy and the consummation of all history. So I told you the torn curtain was a symbol full of eternal meanings. Jesus had come. Jesus has lived. Jesus has died. Jesus has risen. Then I said, when the perfect thing comes, the imperfect thing must go. You see what I'm saying? The Jewish dispensation was abolished. It was, it was abolished in terms of religiosity, but they were still devout Jews. Don't you ever forget that. You should never, ever criticize that. That's the foundation of Christianity there. They were Jews that they went to heaven. You see what I'm saying? The past was done, not because the old was bad, but, but the new was better. See, that's why I hear people talk, the law, the law. Do you realize what you're talking about, man? You talk about something that God wrote with his own finger. But the reason why they called it, they couldn't keep it because they were trying to keep it in the flesh. They couldn't get the access to God. Only the priest once a year, call it the day of atonement, could get in there. Had to be sprinkled with blood plus a sacrifice. You see, but what it, the blood of Jesus is on us all the time. My Lord, there's no more veil. You just come up there. You physically sick? What are you waiting on, man? Go to the healer. You get the healer, you get the healing. You need some provision? Go to the provider. You go to the provider, you get the provision. You don't have to wait and go through different steps to get it. It's completely open to you. Write this down. In Jesus, all man-made restrictions were torn aside. In Jesus, all man-made restrictions were torn, torn aside. That's what happened when the curtain tore. It meant the letting in of light. Think about that. That's why Jesus said, I'm the light of the, light of the world. It meant when that curtain tore, I mean, that, it was so dark you couldn't see nothing there. With the presence of God, but all of a sudden it lit up. And that's why I say all the time, turn on your hard light. People say, but just he smile all the time. I'm letting my light shine, see? Turn on that hard light. Do you understand? My God, all man made restrict. People still try to restrict me from coming to God. Well, you got to do this, you got to do that. No, he's already did it for me. All I got to do is walk up there and go, hello, Jesus. And he said, hi, Jesse. Glory to God. And what a blessing that is. It's like your children. They don't think twice to go run. You could be sleeping. They just go in your bedroom, wake you up, jump on the bed. They definitely will get to your refrigerator. They'll eat everything you got. And there ain't nothing wrong with that because that's your job to keep it full. Isn't that a blessing? In Jesus, all man-made restrictions were torn aside. I love that. It meant the letting in of light. I've had some people say, I, you know, I, I, I'm a very evil man. You know, I, I'm a very evil woman. I said, well, uh, let me just turn my light on for you. I never forget one time, you may have heard me say this. I was preaching up in um, Bastrop, Louisiana. This beautiful lady came forward and uh, received Christ. And we had about maybe 12 or 14, and they all received Christ. And uh, they, they, we took them to the back room and, you know, and, and gave them some instruction and gave them a booklet, you know, and the things. Like that. And it was so wonderful. Well, after the service, I, normally I go to the back or something like that because I'm sweaty, you know. You know and, but I, I just stayed in front. John, I just stayed there, you know what I'm saying? And this lady came up to me. Now, I didn't know her. Susan, I, didn't, I, mean, I seen her in the, in the line, and she had tears in her eyes. And I said, she said, can I talk to you for a minute? I said, yes. I said, yes. And she said, and she leaned over to me real quick. She said, I just want you to know I committed adultery. And I looked at her and I said, no, you haven't. She said, what did you say? She said, no, maybe you misunderstood, but I, I, I committed adultery. I said, no, you haven't. She said, I think I did. I said, well, you're thinking wrong. She said, what? She said, I said, I said you want to tell me again? She said, I, I, I committed adultery. I said, no, you didn't. See, she was still under that old restriction in her mind. I said, no. I said, Jesus just expunged your record. He don't even know what you're talking about. You just got born again. Is that right? 
I said, yeah. I said, the light of the world, free at last, free at last, girl. And buddy, the tears turn into the biggest smile you ever see. I said, never mention it because it doesn't exist anymore. Think about that. She was free. I said, never speak of it. Never, because it didn't happen. God don't know what you're talking about. Not only did he, he didn't cover your sin, he washed it away. And then he expunged the record. My God, man, she just got so happy. And I said, girl, you're born again. And that's what I was talking about here. And Jesus, all man-made restrictions were torn aside. It meant the letting of light, the letting of light out. I mean, when it came in there, but all darkness just went away. You know, I was such an evil man. You can say, oh, brother, you can't be. Well, I was. See, the man you see is a newborn believer with light in him. But before I was saved, I'm telling you, I was a chief of sinners. I enjoyed sinning. I didn't care who I hurt. And I mean, I, and I know that sounds like people say there's no way you could be like that. Ask Kathy. Ask Ricky. <laughs> Ricky. Oh, yeah, no, Ricky. I'm like, brother, am I telling the truth? I, well, you don't have no idea what I was capable of doing or what I did. And I ain't telling you neither. Yeah, yeah, because the statute of limitation ain't run out. Praise God and all that kind. I mean, it didn't make no difference to me at all. You got in my way, you got out of my way. And I mean, just, and I don't care if it was spiritual, physical, or financial. It made no difference to me whatsoever at all. But when Jesus came, the only way I could get to God was without restrictions. I never forget one time I talked to the priest. To go in, I said, listen, can I talk to God? I need to talk to God. What's the matter with you? He was a Sicilian priest. What's the matter with you? You don't talk to God. You're talking to me. You understand? I said, well, do you talk to God? He said, no, I don't talk to God. I said, what do I want to talk to you for? I'm trying to get to the man. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> but that day, that Labor Day weekend, in 1974, at a quarter to nine, the curtain tore. The curtain tore. And light came into God. Light came into me. And I stood before a holy God. And I didn't know what to pray. I didn't know how to pray other than Hail Mary and Our Father. That's all I knew. But Billy Graham knew how to pray. So I thought I'd use his name. I said, God, whatever Billy says. I got born again with whatever Billy says. What did Billy say? Believe with your heart, confess with your mouth. Jesus rose from the dead, you'd be saved. My God, something changed. I went into that dark nightclub and I lit up the place because for the first time in my life, I saw sin. I had never seen it before. Sin to me did not exist. I did whatever I wanted to do, anything, anytime. All of a sudden, I thought, my God, look at the sin in here. And I knew nothing, Susan, of God other than just getting born again. But see, when the restriction goes away, see, that's the blindness. No fear, none whatsoever at all. I've never been afraid of God in my life after I got born again. But I remember Christian people say, God going to kill you, try to make you afraid. No, he's going to love you if you just let him. So in Jesus... All man made restrictions were torn aside. It meant the letting in of light. And I love this point God gave me today. There is no aristocracy in the New Testament church. See, only the high priest could go in there once a year. And if you wasn't the right person, you're not getting to God. But today, there is no aristocracy in the New Testament church. We all come boldly to the throne of grace. In other words, nobody is better than anybody. God loves us all. He's no respecter for, there's no, no aristocracy. None whatsoever at all. In the Jewish position, there was an aristocracy. In the Christian faith, even today, there's an aristocracy, and it should not be. All of us are free to just come in there and just say, hello, Jesus, hi, Jess, and he will receive you. I'm going to show you how powerful it meant when that curtain was torn. If Hitler would have asked God to forgive him, God would have brought him in there. Now, you would think, man, no, not Hitler. I mean, you talk about a demon-possessed man, completely, I mean, completely blind with rage and hatred. And no man can, nobody can hate that much without a devil inside of them. See, 
because Satan hates God because, and Satan has been restricted, rejected, and awaiting confinement. Think about that. Judas, if Judas would have repented, just repented, he could have went in that. I mean, the whole world was opened up to God. No aristocracy, none whatsoever. All the same, one mind, one accord. That's why I believe the way I believe about people. I don't see color, caste, or sex. It don't make no difference to me. If you like you, I like you. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes people want to honor me, and I, I, and I can understand that. And that's, and that's very kind. I'm saying, you know, uh, but I want you to just go first. No, nah, you know, I don't need to be first. I can get in line. I can wait. I can stand. It's nice to go first. That, that, but, you know, and, and it's a blessing that people want to honor you. Don't misunderstand me. But what I'm saying is, I mean, I'm just the same. And, you know, uh, the other day I, I was preaching there in downtown New Orleans, and the, we were having a big dinner. To make a long story short, the, the uh, people that waited on, on us were sweet. And some, some lady behind me, one of the waitresses, uh, they, she said, excuse me. And I couldn't see her. She said, behind me, can I touch you? I said, touch me? And I turned around like that. And she said, I've watched you on television for years, and I love your ministry because you're famous. I said, no, ma'am, I'm not famous. I think you're famous. Can I touch you? I said, help yourself. <laughs> you know, I thought, oh my God. See, she thought I was aristocracy. That I was really something. No. All I was was a man filled with the Holy Spirit. What she was touching was not me, but the Christ that's in me. Do you see that? That's just truly amazing how, how wonderful they are. That means there ain't nobody bigger or better than you are. And let me tell you about the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. I call it the executive branch of God's government, and you need to honor that. Don't misunderstand me. But, what the, but that doesn't mean actually they're more of a servant to you than you are to them. Actually, they say we serve you instead of you serving us. But a lot of times they get that mixed around and going the other way. And I, and I understand you want to honor. I have no problem with that. But you have to re, re, remind yourself, never put restriction. Because Jesus, when he tore the curtain, he shut it all down. Isn't that amazing, man? That's why I'm free. That's why I'm happy. I know, oh, I'm going to make somebody mad when I say that. I know God is pleased with me. You know why? Because I make him irresistible. <laughs> I love that. Susan, I've never forgotten. I never will forget that. In fact, when I get to heaven, I said, do you know what Susan Kightley said about me? And you know what he's going to say? No, she said that about me in you. <laughs> so, so when you understand that, there's no aristocracy in the New Testament church. We all can come boldly to the throne of grace. Write this down. When that curtain tore, the power of sin was broken. The power of sin was broken. Man was freed in Christ's triumph. Think about that. In his death, in his burial, in his resurrection, when you think he's finished, you were set free. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. How many times the devil's tried to tempt me with stuff? I used to drink a fifth of whiskey a day before I was saved. I would drink that. I started about 6.30, eat eggs and bacon and scotch. And I'd be finished that, John, about 2, 2.15. And then, I mean, by the time I got at night, I know I'd probably drink 15, 20 drinks. Uh, Dr. Hader, well, Tommy Hader, I think he's passed away now. He said, boy, you are going to have cirrhosis of the liver by the time you're 24 years old. I've been drinking since I was six. Because my uncles would leave cans of half a can of beer. I got drunk when I was six one time. Fell off the back of a boat hanging on. Could have drowned. Loaded it because I was drinking the beer that they left in the, in the can. And they thought they were smart. Mama beat me sober. She was so glad I didn't drown. I started drinking. I would go, we used to have a ring of thermos. Uh, in those days, before they had, you brought your own little lunch, you know, to the elementary school. And they thought I had Kool-Aid and I had slow gin in the thermos. And I'll tell you what, in high school, by the time I got to algebra, algebra, whoo, A plus B equals C, baby. I, I was lit up. <laughs> And then they found out and want to suspend me. You know what I mean? I mean, my God. And, you know, it was amazing how I enjoyed sin. And you know what? The church, to me, was just church. See? They weren't helping me. They were restricting me. I don't mean not to be cruel. I'm just telling you a truth. You see what I'm saying? I mean, you're not like us. I remember when I first got saved, the first thing they told me, they should have said, congratulations, you're born again. You need to cut that hair, boy. 
I had long hair. I mean, I mean, and you know, I came out the, the seventh day, hair, hair, you know, you know what I'm talking about, all that craziness. I mean, you know, I mean, it, oh, and immediately they were trying to clean the outside. In other words, they're trying to clean the fish before they catch it. Now, how are you going to clean the fish when he's alive? <laughs> you got to catch the fish before you clean it. And even after I got born again, he ain't born again. He still got that rockiness in him. You know why? Why they thought that? Because they wanted to be the me mediator between me and God. They wanted me to handle and accept their tr restrictions. I never forget one time I tell this couple, I didn't know y'all was black till you told me you were. <laughs> I went preaching north, north, uh, north uh, Louisiana. And it's a white church. I didn't know it was a white church. You know, I was just the beginning of my ministry, man. I mean, I'm talking about, I'm mean, 78, I think it was. And, uh, and, and it only sat maybe, I don't know, 125 people, you know, something like that. So, and, they, and they introduced me. We have a Cajun preacher. You know how they introduce me? I just have to say it. We have a coon-ass preacher here. Now, that's a prejudice statement. Now, Cajun people don't think that, but we have a coon-ass preacher here. That's the way it was. So I just came to the platform. I, it didn't make me mad because I knew I was dealing with ignorant people. <laughs> they weren't dumb. They're just ignorant. That's all. So, and I saw a black couple when the two little kids come in the back and they sat on the last pew in the back. And I never thought nothing about it, you know, because you know, I was not raised prejudiced. Now, my uncles and a lot of them were prejudiced, some of them, and my grandparents, but not my mama. Oh, no, we wouldn't allow, oh, no, no. She said, I know meanness when I see it. She didn't know what the word prejudice was. She just called it meanness. So anyway, and I saw them, and I'm about ready to, you know, Susan to preach. And I saw Deacon get up, walked over, and went like this. I don't know, I couldn't hear what he said. And, and I heard, I saw the man go, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, so I'm going to pray. So he takes his wife, they get up, and they start to walk out the church like this with the kids. And, I, you know, and me, when I see something, I, I'm going to express my opinion. I said, excuse me, where y'all going? Oh, Brother Jesse, something came up and we got to go. I said, something came up. And, I, and you know, but we just wanted to come see you and something got to go. I said, did that guy tell you to leave this church? Now, when you say stuff like that, boom, everything goes quiet. Because inquiring minds want to know. He said, now, Brother Joshua, you know, he got that Brother Joshua. This is a white church. He said that to the wrong man. And the pastor agreed with it. He was right behind me, John, about from here to, about from here, to here. And I said, uh, where y'all going? They said, uh, well, we got to, I said, are y'all going to lunch? Yeah. yeah. I said, I took my Bible and said, well, I'm going with you. And I just walked out of there. In a sense, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna put up with that mess. That's wrong. See, that's separation. That's restriction. And Jesus tore the curtain. For well, the Father God, with the voice of Jesus. Let me say it again. The power of sin was broken. Man was freed in Christ's triumph. Now, you know who's the first person called him the Son of God? It was not the Jew. You know, we know the Father God, they both, you know. This is after when he died, the centurion. He was a Gentile. When he saw Jesus dying, he hollered that loud. That man was very familiar with crucifixion. You can't holler when you die. You, so, uh, you have no air in your lung. You can't, be, you just, it's, it's a terrible, torturous death. The centurion realized Jesus was not a criminal. Satan was. Write that down. The centurion realized Jesus was not a criminal. Anybody that died by crucifixion was considered criminals. Satan was. He said, truly, this was the son of God. See, he heard about the, 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 that curtain tore and the curtain tore. See, I mean, imme immediately freedom began to go across that land. Whether you accept it or not, it was there. Freedom is everywhere today, whether you accept it or not. That's why people want to come to America. So they can free to have freedom of speech, free, and they're trying to take that away from us. Uh, you know, all of uh, the Bill of Rights, Bill of Rights, not the Bill of Wrongs. 
the Bill of Rights. You have rights, you see what I'm saying? Everybody wants to get here. And why? Because it was founded upon Judeo-Christian ethic. And every, watch it, every country that stayed with Jesus Christ that was founded on Judeo-Christian are all prosperous. The minute they start walking away from God, they get in debt, they get in crime, and guess what's happening in America? You see my point? At one time, England was prosperous. Boy. Why? Because they brought the gospel to the world. They crossed the oceans. But all, not only 1% of England, am I correct, Martin? I believe it's 1% of the United Kingdom goes to church now. Yeah. Now, you know something. Ah, where's the British Empire? Where's all this stuff? You see what I'm saying? Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen. And even <laughs> the communist nations, they're not worth much of nothing. There's just a set few because they happen to be in control. But buddy, you put God first, he's going to put you first. In your health, in your spirit, and in your wallet, and in your purse. Listen to me, man. Let me say it again. The centurion realized Jesus was not a criminal. Satan was. Now, why did God tear that curtain? Well, we know to stop the separation. But people always wanted to know about God. But they were so afraid of him that they told Moses, uh, let God talk to you. Because when God talks, he, he don't talk like this. And I'm not being critical of the Catholic Church. Let's all stand in prayer. Now, when he talked, the mountain rumbles. They go, listen to the point. In the tearing of the curtain, the secrecy of God was revealed and open. Found out that he wasn't this big bad God. He was this big loving father. Isn't that amazing? Let me say it again. In the tearing of the curtain, the secrecy of God was revealed and open. Yeah. And it's so, so when I got born again, I felt, for lack of a better way to say, I felt so good, Kelly. For the first time, the sin was off of me. And I remember going out when I, when, when I, I walked, remember Kathy, when I walked back up to the hotel room and I, I walked in and I said, Kathy, I got to get out of here. I got to quit this. And you couldn't make me quit music. I don't care. Music was my life. I've been playing music since I'm six years old. I play 11 instruments. I mean, I said, you ain't getting me out of music. In fact, I tried to talk God up. I said, now listen, God, I don't make them drink. I don't make them smoke dope or run around with women. I'm just going to play my music, take my millions of dollars and go home. <laughs> You know, take my money and just take off. You know, just go with it. You know what I'm saying? And he never told me to quit the music business. No, he never told me to get out the nightclubs. Oh, look at some of y'all. Mm, he never did. He never did. You know what he said? That's because I was thinking, you know, John, I said, hey, I mean, well, you work for a company that might be sinning and you get saved. Did you quit your job? Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. I'm pulling some restrictions away right now. Yeah. See, that's that religiosity, see? Yeah. And so watch, you know what I did? He asked me a question. He said, can I ask you a question? I said, yes. He said, do you love that more than you love me? Oh Ooh, I, I went. You know what I said? I got to think about that. <laughs> because music was my life. Yes. That's what I did. Not only for a living, but Ron, I just flat love playing music. I say, and when you got a good band cooking, I can see y'all, boy, when the worship team's cooking, Renee's, you know, got a little leg flipping and flopping in the back back there, and my man with the black hat on, Wee! and then you got Joy doing this, and our brother just beating the drums, and then we had Katie hitting that, that, that wonderful saxophone or clarinet, whatever you call that thing. Oh, it's cooking. That's as good as it gets, man, when you're just flowing, you know, and you're jamming, what we call jamming, you know. He just simply asked me a question. And it wasn't no guilt, no nothing. Because, see, I was free. I was free. Do you love that more than you love me? I must have thought about that for a good two weeks. And I remember the day that I decided to make my decision. I love to play. How else am I going to make my living? This is a boy that knows nothing about the word of God because he didn't even know how to pray the salvation prayer. He just said whatever Billy said. And I looked and I thought, 
I'm not losing this. I said, no, Lord. I love you more than I love this. I'm leaving this. I'm the one made that decision. God did not make that decision for me, John. See, he, he, I was still free. And I gave my notice and I walked out. And it took four months to get me out of the music business. Because you just don't quit. When you're under those kind of, when you get on that level of music, you're signing contracts, you know, you, it, it's a lot of legal things and legal issues and things of that nature. And, uh, and when I walked out, my God, I, I went from thousands, oh God, so much money that I got a job at Patterson Truck Line and I made a dollar and 75 cents an hour. That's 1975. I was so glad. I remember when I got my check Kelly, I thought, I, make, I made this in 50 seconds. And that was 50 hours of work. I didn't care. I was so happy. Kathy was so happy. Oh, God. And then we give all our money away. You see, when you're free, there's a lot of things you can do. If you're not free, you may be free, but you got your hand and your wallet together. This is going to stick with me, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> you see, <laughs> have you ever opened up your wallet and the Lord said, give that 100? What, you said 20, did you? Did you say, <laughs> did you, you said 20, 20, 20 okay, I, I must have missed the 10, that's what you said, didn't you? No, you said, add a zero to the 10. Jesus. I and mean, you Catholic, that's very hard to do. Because you give a dollar. I don't mean to be critical, you know. I love the way Catholic people pick up offerings. You only need one usher. <laughs> He's standing right here, and he got a 20-foot pole with a basket on the end of it. And he run it right down. How many people know what I'm talking about? <laughs> mm, and then swing that baby over. <laughs> okay. Now, in the Protestant church, you got to have all kind of ushers. And they got them little velvet sacks. I used to love R. W. Shambach. He came out with garbage cans. He'd be dragging the garbage cans and fill them up, brother. Dragging them garbage cans. I couldn't get over that. I said, now it takes a free man to do that. I was free. And I walked out the music business. On Christmas Eve, no, the week before Christmas Eve, 1974. I didn't know what I was going to do. And you know who gave me a job? People that would flew to Dallas to hear me play and do my, and do my we used to do like a Las Vegas review, kind of stuff like that, you know. And he said, we gonna give you a job, but you ain't gonna stay here. You're an entertainer, boy, you're a rocker. And I was so glad for the first time in my life, I was free. Yes. Free. Jesus took the restriction. The curtain was tore. Let me say it again. In the tearing of the curtain, the secrecy of God was revealed and opened. And then they tried to get me into prayer bondage. Went to the church. Okay, let's pray. Get on your knees. And you know, after a while, Father, thank you for the refrigerator. Thank you for the call. Thank you for a job. After a while, you run out of stuff to say. That's called prayer bondage. And that's why I came up. I said, listen, God, <laughs> I think I, uh, I thank you for everything I got. So what else do I say? He said, why don't we just talk? Talk. Conversation. And that's why I began. Hello, Jesus. Hi, Jesse. And most ministers love the way of my relationship with God. I mean, Andrew Womack said, I had never... Jesse got a relation with God like most people. I talked to the Lord. I mean, we just had, we had a good conversation this morning. I mean, I was in my chapel this morning. I said, I took Holy Communion. I have a beautiful chapel. You ought to see that. It's, it's, I call it the God room. This is my favorite room in the whole house. It's gorgeous. Pews in there, small pews that are 300 years old that I got out of abbeys and cathedrals from all over the world. It's beautiful. And I took my, I was about ready to do, and, and I, I said, Lord, he said, let me talk. And I went, sure. And he started, the Holy Ghost started praying. 
And I said, uh, could you let me hear that in English? And all of a sudden I could hear the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, but I, it was, I could hear it in English in my ear. I said, this is closeness. See, and it was wonderful that he prayed for me, prayed for other people, switched over and prayed for someone. And then he said something I didn't understand. And that's for a person I did not know because he ever lived to make intercession. And I allowed him to use, my, but I was listening and I could hear it in English. I thought, man, this is great. I said, he said you, then he said, you know how come you can hear that? Because we have a relationship and a fellowship. So I went from religion to relationship to fellowship. Amen. You see what I'm saying? What happened, man? The tearing of the curtain. The secrets of God was revealed and opened. Write this down. We should, we should use the Christian privilege and draw nigh by faith, love, and reverence. That's what I did this morning. We should use the Christian privilege. The Jews didn't have that privilege. Buddha doesn't have that privilege. Other religions don't have that privilege. We should use the Christian privilege and draw nigh by faith, love, and reverence. I mean, my God, at any given time. I wake up with Jesus. I go to bed with Jesus. I preached that sermon the other day. Abiding is better than just visiting. I, 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 when I laid down, and let me tell you what I did. I did something really wonderful yesterday. We had finished the, uh, uh, the visionary conference. And I mean, you guys understand, I, was pre I preached Wednesday, I preached Thursday night, I preached Friday morning, I preached Friday night, and a lot of preaching in between with people and all this kind of stuff. stuff. And I got to preach this morning. Well, last night, I, you know, I, Kathy had been trying to find me a, a hobby for years. My hobby is work. That's what I do. I, mean, I, just, I just work. Well, anyway, it was 6 o'clock, and I'm sitting in our little den there, and <laughs> But it ain't nothing little about it. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Kathy said, hey, you want to watch a movie? Now, you know what that means to me, Kelly? She don't want to watch a movie. She wants a pint of ice cream. Because <laughs> that's how she likes to watch a movie. But I, what's wrong with that? Not a thing, sweetheart. Don't get mad at me if you see it next week in the back. But anyway, that's all I'm, I don't care. So watch this, you know. <laughs> she likes butter pecan. She's real funny about her ice cream. Oh, it's, it's ice cream day today. Did you know that? I was ahead of it. She was ahead of the curve, you know. So I said, and I was tired. And normally I just go, we go to, I said, no, I, I don't want to, I, I, man, I'm just tired. It just hit me. I said, you want to find an ice cream? Watch what she said. She prophesied it, so I had to do it. You're going to tell everybody that you went and get me a, <laughs> you prophesied it, Kathy, oh, what you want me to do? <laughs> no, no, you just, she prophesied. That's history wrote in advance. So, I have an elevator in my house. I like walking the steps. Kathy likes the elevator. So I took the elevator up there, went and get her a, a, <laughs> a pint of butter pecan, and I gave it to her. You know, she'll look at it, she'll go, you know, that's not a real pint because they kind of drill. She said, that's not completely all. I said, Kathy, just eat the pint. Don't worry about it. It's a pint. No, nah, ain't a pint. They got, <laughs> well, you know, oh, she's real funny, but I brought it to her. And I, so I'm sitting, out, and I thought, good God, why am I beating my brain? I said, I'm going to bed. I went to bed last night at 7.15. It was still daylight, John. <clears throat> and the next thing I knew, it was five minutes to six. Wow. I woke I feel like a million bucks, man. I slept almost 11 hours. <laughs> and there was Kathy. I looked at her, and she was. <laughs> <laughs> that little lip does it. Is there any, have you ever seen your husband or your wife do that? Anybody? You ever seen? I guess it's a natural thing. I guess I do it too. I guess I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, you know, she got her part. I went to bed and the Lord said, well, how you feel this morning? I said, he said, I put 20 hours in there. I said, well, I show, I tell you what, God, he said, I didn't ask. He said, you didn't have to. You come to me anytime you want. I heard you say you was tired. He said, I can fix that. And I said, boy, you sure did. It was such a blessing. And man, I just got the feeling good. And I decided to put these shoes on that Jody bought me. Y'all like these shoes? I'm being known for my footwear now. <laughs> well, I prefer my cowboy boots, but I said, that's that way. They always, I'm buying, you're the hardest man in the world. About no, I'm not. I'm really actually very easy. Because it don't have to be expensive. It can be if you want to. It can be the cheapest thing. In the, it don't make no difference to me. I don't care. I can still sleep on the floor as a kid. Oh, yeah. I have no problem with that. 
It don't make any, like one of my board members came with me. I said, you want to go on one of my trips? He said, yeah. I said, I said, I said we're going to Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. We'll fly all the way up there. Then we're going to go to Hungry Horse, Montana. We're going to preach to some Indian people, some wonderful people. Then we're going to Seattle, Washington. And then from Seattle, Washington, we're going to fly back. And he, my, he, so he thought he was just going to have, that we go out and have fun. Well, we have fun. We work. He, he, he just like Kathy, he had to sleep on my plane. He said, my God, y'all work. I said, yeah, we ain't out here playing. We're about the father's business. You understand? We gotta, yeah. And we're on a schedule. Let's move. Let's do that. And I'm going to close. Let me, let me give you that point again. We should use the Christian privilege and draw nigh by faith, love, and reverence. And here's the last point. We should all pray for the strength of deep conviction. Deep conviction. Of what? Of this tearing of the curtain that it produced. We should all pray for the strength of deep conviction. This tearing of the curtain produced. That we never forget it. That when Satan tries to restrain us from coming to God, sometimes you mess up, you sin. Oh, man. I, I told that to Jody when she was growing up. I said, Jody, I want to tell you something. You're not perfect. I think you are. But if you ever sin, if you mess up, don't run from me. Run toward me. I promise you, I may not like what you've done, but I got you back. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I didn't say I like what you've done. So remember that, Joey. Remember that. If you mess up, I don't care what it is, don't run from me. Run toward me. I will be the father that I am. Amen. Now, I may not like it. I told her, I said, if you ever rob a store, I'd probably drive the getaway car. I'd be chewing your butt out, but I'd be driving the getaway <laughs> car. I can't let you do you crazy girl. <laughs> Don't run from me. Run toward me. And I tell that to people all the time, that if you're a Christian and you blow it, you do something wrong, don't feel so guilty that you don't want to go talk to God. Run toward him. Yeah. He's actually in the sin business. Yeah. To wash it away. That's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Yeah, give the Lord a hand clap for that. That's that deep conviction. And the curtain tore. So you, you see, but you got to watch out for the church world because they'll try to mend the curtain. <laughs> they'll try to mend the curtain and get, you, and get God behind the curtain in the dark. Uh -uh. Throw away your needles and thread because it's never going to happen. See, that's why he tore it from the top down. You see what I'm saying? It had to be God to do that. And I've had the Lord tell me, I learned that statement. God said, Jesse, if you ever blow it and mess up, don't run from me. Run toward me. And there was times I wanted, because I've learned as I grow older, too much is given, much is required, that I have to watch my thought processes. Because my old way of thinking wants to come back in there sometimes. And I'm going to tell you something. You may not be judged for that, but because of the position I hold, and I'm not better than you. I'm not aristocracy. But because of the position that I owe, I am held more accountable. You want scripture? Too much is given. Much is required. Let me give you an example. And I'll close with this. If you mess up with a woman or a man or whatever, we can help you. The church will be okay. I mess up with a woman. It hits all the way to the back pew. Not that I'm better, but too much is given. Much is required. I mean, think about Moses. Out in that desert with them stiff-necked people, John. Got him so mad he hit the rock. He shouldn't have hit that rock. He shouldn't have hit that rock. And you know, God said, I'll, I'll let you see the promised land, but you can't walk in it. Do you know that the original three never made it to the promised land? That's Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, and all three wanted to get there, but they messed up. Well, why didn't God allow? Because too much is given, much is required. You know, so I was talking to God one time in my conversation, Jude, and I said, boy, you're a little hard on Moses, huh? But God said, you're with the crazy, rebellious, stiff-necked people, and he blew it. He shouldn't have hit the rock, and I understand what it meant but it meant more to God than he did to Moses. And God said, 
You, uh -uh. I'll let you get to the top and you can look over, but you can't go in. Now, he didn't throw away Moses because you find at the Mount, Transfigur Mount Transfiguration, you got Moses and Elijah and all of them. Uh, uh, he's still in the ministry, ladies and gentlemen. He's still the lawgiver of Moses. He was ministering to Jesus. Amen. But he couldn't go in there. Do you see that? So people say, I really want to grow in God. Good. But remember, too much is given. Much is required. Well, what happens if something real hard happens in your life? You know the Lord? And, you be, and people listen to you as you speak about God? You're going to have to hold yourself. Oh, that's not easy. But too much is given. Much is, is required. So I watch myself. I do. And what I mean by that, boy, sometimes somebody wants to, they're messing with me all the time. You know, after a while, it's like somebody pricking you with a pin. I said, well, enough's enough. But I, I can't cross that line. Because a judgment will come to me, not because God loves me more than you, but too much is given. Much is required. Jonathan Shuttlesworth. And just to the prayer. What's the difference? Both preachers. But he can get on social media and stand in front of a jet. Him and his wife and Camille is daughter. <laughs> he charters jets and stuff like that. Me, they want to eat my life. Me and Kenneth Copeland, they want to kill us. But see, we paid that way, Kelly. Your daddy paid that way, paid that way and I did too, you know. That Jerry Savelle always seems to slide under the radar. <laughs> and I'm going to have to talk to God about that. <laughs> he got the jet. <laughs> but my God, if Kenneth moves one minute, I move, bam, he just nail us to the wall, man. <laughs> I said, Jerry, why? He said, I'm God's favorite. <laughs> I said, okay, I understand it. But you see, too much is given, much is required. So when you get known better, you better get ready for more persecution. I want to be a minister of the gospel. Really? That's easier said than done. I'm Jesse Duplantis, and I approve this message. Give the Lord a hand clap for that. Come on, you can give him one better than that. Woo! And the curtain tore. Did you like that? In just a minute, we're going to receive our offering this morning, and we're going to do something different this morning. Normally, it's the morning tithe and offering, but the Lord said, I want you to add it to the um, visionary conference offering. Ladies and gentlemen, we're over the million dollars. <laughs> Give the Lord a hand clap for that. Well, what you going to do with that? As I use it, I'm going to refill it. What it is, and Linda asked me to explain it a little bit better. Linda, lift your hand up so you know what I'm talking about. What it is, is a buffer when I was flying across the ocean to get back to America. And I have paid for all this, this uh, fuel. You, my, money, my money's paid for it. I never would tell anybody that. And people say, why are you so blessed? Well, it's over $10 million. I'm not a broke man. And to make a long story short, the Lord said, I want now that every soul that's saved, every soul that's healed, every soul that gets out of depression, despondency, poverty, I want to credit that to them like I've accredited to you. But if you keep doing this all the time, and he said, and you can if you want to. That's not the issue. And I wanted to. He said, but I would prefer. And I knew what he said that. I, yeah, I would prefer that you do this and keep an account. And as it dwindles down, fill it back up. And that way, because there's some places people want me to come. There's no way they could ever even give an offering, much less ever think that I would come. See, I'm a man that's always ahead. So before I start something, I'll have that finance. He said, and I will credit everyone that's given in that offering, the souls that were saved, and he said that anointing of increase that's on you will come upon them in the financial area and every area. I'm not just saying that for you to give something. I'm telling you. Otherwise, I would never tell you. Nobody knew that until this, well, this is Sunday, but up until last week, I just, I just knew that. You know, and, and, and my director of uh, finance is here, Wendy. Wendy's in the back back there. And, and also my other niece, uh, oh, uh, West Ham and Joe. I can't see, I got lights. Back. Both of y'all stand up. These are my nieces. Give them a hand clap. They both worked for me at one time. Come on, Tam and Joe and Wendy. Yeah, they're such blessings of the Lord. Okay, y'all can be seated. Wendy still works for me. And Tam and Joe used to be the head of the maintenance department. 
she outworked men like she just work them to a dog. But they, she said, when is she going to quit? <laughs> She'd make them work. All that grass that you see out there, Tammy Joe and them laid all that. Tammy Joe, she was fast in there. I mean, slapping that grass. Had Fritz running all over the yard. <laughs> it was amazing. They're wonderful people. I never tell people what I do. And Wendy sometimes says, uh, boss, the minister should have paid for that. You ought to give me a receipt. I'll take care of it. That's all right. And, and I just like blessing the Lord. And he says, Jesse, you didn't have to do that. I said, I know. I just like to do it because I just love you. Just have, and he says, I will not owe no man anything. And he will bless me and minister greatly to me. So if you don't mind this, the tithe and offering today, only today, I'm going to put 100% of it toward the Visionary Conference. And we're already over. We're just going to pile it in there and go preach for people to change, reach people, change lives one soul at a time. If there's an offering envelope on the back of the pew, if you want to write a check, make it out to Covenant Church or JDM, which, well, make it out to JDM because I'm going to give it to that for the Visionary Conference. If you're watching online and you want to give, go to our website, jdm.org, you can give that way. You can use PayPal. And I don't really know what all this stuff is because I'm not computer savvy too much. You can use PayPal in that way. Or you can go, you can text to give a one-time donation or a recurring one if you want. Or you can go to our mobile app and give that way if you want to. Or you can just write an old-fashioned check. Kathy, you want to say something? I'm just saying it's okay if they wrote to Covenant Church. Which I okay. Okay, if you write it to Covenant Church, you will be credited at Covenant Church too. Six one way, half a dozen the other. We know what it is. Let me tell you something. Covenant Church and JDM, it's one pot, just different division. That's how that works. And, uh, and God is so good. I ask you to do your best. And I know many of you have already given, and I thank you for it. If you want to do more, fine. If you don't want to, don't. Now, you're not going to hear many preachers say that. I'm not that kind of man. I want you to give because you're willing and obedient. I don't want you to be under any pressure whatsoever. If you're out there, we're believing God for the most unbelievable, impossible, yet doable things. Hallelujah. I mean, if you want, you see all these lights that you see in here? It's going to cost about $2.3 million to change all that to LED. Yeah. That's outrageous, isn't it? It's outrageous. You know, and all, but these lights, see, eventually they will not make these bulbs anymore. You can still do that, but what happens is the difference in coloration changes, and, then the, and that camera's going to pick it up. We've got the finest cameras money can buy. I mean the best. Them cameras cost a fortune out there. I mean, just that lens is like $150,000, $200,000, just the lens. That stand is $40,000. Just the stand. Not counting the camera. Camera's a quarter of a million to 300000 so, buddy, you put that all together, <laughs> you, you get the, yeah. but, so they're very, it's very good. It's not as good as the human eye. Only God can create that kind of lens. Even if it's blurred, you still see better than most uh, cameras and things of that nature. And we have so many of them. So we're gonna, that's going to be one of the projects. Kathy wants an event center. I know that's going to cost me $5 million to do all that kind of stuff. We've got to get all that stuff. That, you know, people are always coming up with things, and, and they think I'm the uh, proverbial apple tree. Just pull an apple off of it, and we'll get it done. Well, I'll do everything I know to do, but God uses people. So I ask you to do your best. You give me $1,000, I get 1,000 people saved. That's a fact. It's going to happen. Well, now... I, I am in debt to God to get over a million people born again, and I will do it. Amen. I will do it. Do you know last month we increased people that uh, called us, and over a million, 1.3 million more people called us last month in one month's time, over 57 million people just on social media? We are doing this work, ladies and gentlemen. So I ask you to do your best, and God will honor you. Hold your offering up to the Lord. Did I say it right? PayPal. JDM website, you give that way, text to give, mobile app, or Covenant Church, if you want to make it here at, uh, at check, or JDM, however you want to do it, and God will bless you. Also, Kathy has a, 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 a project of she spending $200,000 on the kids. Am I correct with that? Church, and, and, and someone gave $1,200. Uh, there it is, toward that thing. And I don't know how close y'all get, but y'all got quite a bit coming in there. I don't know all of it. It's not finished yet, but it's getting there. Okay, 130,000 has come in toward that. Give Jesus a hand clap for that. That's a blessing. This is over and above the normal operating budget of this place. You see what I'm saying? And right now, th these lights are burning electricity like crazy. See what I'm saying? And we'll take care of all that. That's not the issue. Father, I thank you today for this offering. And Lord, you told me to add it. That was your direction, not mine, to the Visionary Conference. Because you want more people saved overseas, in America, and other nations of the world. I ask you to bless people with the 30, the 60, the 100 fold and a thousand time return. I thank you for it, Lord. I decree it and declare it today in Jesus' name. 
amen and amen. Ushers, go ahead and receive this morning's offering. You'll be blessed by it, and I thank you for giving grace. You that have come to Covenant Church, thank you for your tithe and offerings, your morning tithe and offerings to those things, and me and Kathy never touch it. We never do. I don't touch God's money whatsoever at all. I don't do that. I don't need to. I would never even think that. In fact, I like being a blessing to him, but I found out he likes being a blessing to me. And that God is so good and great. Have y'all noticed this ring I'm wearing today? It's, it, it's got a face of Jesus. See that? That was given to me in the hallway in South Africa as I was walking to my room. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that? I just thought I'd show it to you. Isn't that nice? I mean, that's pretty nice, huh? Look at that. And you know, I thank you, sir. And then this here. Oh, people will get mad when I do that. This is a Snoopy. A Snoopy, and that's an Omega. This here was the Apollo 13. It's a very expensive watch. A uh, 007 wear Omega. Okay. <laughs> that was given in the hallway. I said, no, sir, I, I have everything. He said, no, no, I just want to be a blessing. So I said, so I owe it to, to uh, wear it. You know? now, Kathy, give me this. <laughs> That's the wedding band. She says, I, I tie your finger and your body to that band. <laughs> I said, okay. I said, all right. Hallelujah. Thank you for giving this message. And all you that came for the Visionary Conference, next year we'll be doing it again. And uh, we'll do it till Jesus comes. And so many people, we're getting all kind of emails and Texas and everything, how they've enjoyed it. You know what's happening this morning? You know, thank God. You know why the, the Lord decided to give this offering to the Visionary Conference? I had a phone call. I called a preacher and I said, thanks for coming. He said, and he's an apostle. He said, one of my churches called me and said, and said they want to receive a Sunday morning offering for that buffer. So they're receiving an offering right now for that fuel thing to get people say, and they say they want, they, they're sending it in, and how do we put it on the memo? I said, Visionary Conference. Now, what's the odds of people doing that? Wow. This man, he was the pastor. He gave, and that's good enough. But the Lord must have spoke to him. He said, I'm receiving an offering from the church this morning up in the Houston area, Houston, Texas area, and he's sending it over there. Kathy, you got something to say? I just wanted to say how whole families came out. We have a family here that came. Mm -hmm. Would y'all stand up? The family that came out, the uh, Lash family, would y'all stand up? We want to acknowledge y'all. They come every year. They brought all their children. Yeah, got Just, in fact, dedicated one of their babies before service. He's yeah. dedicated all of their children. I think they're in children's church. But I think he got four kids now. Or he said, that's it. No he more. He said, that's no it. <laughs> he said, you ain't dedicating no more babies. That's it. But I also want to but share. But you know, brother, let me just tell you, that ain't up to you. That's up to her. <laughs> well, maybe you had it fixed. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> she said it's up <laughs> to her. But the only way. Hallelujah. <laughs> anyway, we had a testimony that came in on the app. I wanted you to read uh, social media, send it to me. It says, me and my family were so blessed attending the Visionary Conference. We loaded up the kids and drove from South Carolina to be part of the conference. It was our first time attending in person. We've always watched online. There's something to be said about being in the building under the corporate anointing. Being a part of Jesse Duplantis Ministries has truly blessed our lives. Give the Lord, Lord a, a hand clap for that. And next year's conference dates are July the 11th and the 12th, 2024. Jesse will be, the I'm, day before I'm, that, he'll be, I think, a few I'm days before. I'm 75, 75. Years old and I'm excited about So we're going to have a lot to celebrate. Amen. It's going to be a special time. Would you stand to your feet real quick? You already, we've already prayed that by stripes you're healed that you're saved and blessed, that while I was speaking, the Lord said I was saving people in their hearts, touching their bodies, blessing their wallets. I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. And I tell covenant churches, and I've, they've heard me say it once, I don't know how many times, we believe for you to be debt-free, but not only debt-free, but the amount of money you were in debt, have that in liquid finance in some bank somewhere so you can go do whatever you want to do. And God will honestly bless you and minister greatly to you. I thank Susan for staying over. I thank Kelly and them for coming. Y'all bless me. And Rachel and, 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 and the Blash family, Rachel and, and John and Paxton, uh, uh, Paxton John, excuse me, and, uh, and the Wilcox family. And, and Charlie, I thank you for coming over. Charlie and Sheila, what a blessing. We love Charlie. It's a blessing of the Lord. He comes up to me. I drop him off. He lives right around the Hammond area, wherever in that area. And he's on the board of directors of Kenneth Copeland, and so am I. So I walked up to him one time. He was catching a flight. I said, you know, Charlie, I'm just, I'm flying over your house. I said, I'll just tell him to 
land a plane in Hammond Airport, you can get off, you won't have to drive. Oh, would you do that? Yeah. And we've been doing that for a couple of two or three or four years, whatever it is like that. And as soon as I drop him off, I'll tell you, before he gets home, I'm in New Orleans. I drop him off, he goes up, mm, I take off, and then what, five, four minutes, five, six minutes, boom, we landed in New Orleans. So it's a blessing to see Charlie and Sheila, and I thank all that. And I got me a new son, Riley, and that's a blessing to God. Thank you for that. And, and uh, I, I love the people that work for Kenneth Copeland Ministries because it's a ministry of great honor and integrity. I don't know, you know, not that we love other people anymore, anybody else, but uh, it's, it's, can you imagine that? It's amazing, all those years that we've never had arguments We've all preached with each other. You don't see that, buddy, in the Christian world. You know what I'm saying? It, it's just amazing how the Lord has connected us. And not only that, but in fa our family relationships in the whole ball of wax. Heavenly Father, I thank you that this is the day the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for the healing of people's bodies and uh, their souls being saved, their wallets being full of the blessings of the Lord. Lord, and when people go home, they go home completely safe because we draw the bloodline on them. And God, whatever they need, desire, want, is given and expressed greatly through you. Thank you for tearing the curtain. There's no more restriction, none whatsoever at all, at any time that we can come boldly to your throne. All those that are watching online and all over the world, I thank you that the restrictions are gone and the freedom of God and the light of God is now shining brightly in the world. We thank you for it. We believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Shake somebody's hand. Tell them you love them. We'll see you next time right here at Covenant Church. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.